Hi everyone, it's Karen here with a mixed media altered paintbrush tutorial. A few of us have gathered to collaborate on a YouTube hop as we create different altered paintbrushes. Each one of us created an altered brush and some of us created tutorials for it that you can hop along and see all the videos. Some people are just showing their paintbrushes on their blog and some of us even have some giveaways. So it's really worth it to go along and just look at all the different paintbrushes so you can see what we've created. A few of us are having giveaways and I'm having one as well. So stay tuned to the end of the video so you can see what I'm giving away and how to enter. The links to all the other brush videos and posts are in the description area below as well as all the materials I use to create my brush. The first thing I did is I took a 3 inch wide brush and covered it in white gesso. I just gave it a light coat on both sides. This brush has long bristles so I could basically embellish a little bit more than one with short bristles. And I went both front and back and added the gesso. I did a couple of coats and dried in between so I could really cover the wooden part. In terms of the bristles, I actually didn't cover them all. I just lightly brushed them in a downward motion to just create a little bit of white at the edge where the metal touches it. I took a lid from one of my mixed media jars and covered it in white gesso as well as this was um, black. I guess I could have used a white lid, but all the lids from Finnabear are black, so I knew I had to cover that as well. And I just here I am giving another coat to the brush while I'm drying the lid, and then I gave the lid a second coat. It didn't really have to be perfect because I was going to cover it with the tissue paper, but I just wanted it to be a little bit of white so you don't see that black underneath. This is a heavy gel lid that I had finished and I saved a bunch of the lids so I could create a brush. I took some Tim Holtz tissue paper and some Liquitex matte medium, which is very fluid and liquidy, so it's really easy to use with a tissue paper. And using a brush, I started applying the tissue paper in all different areas on the brush and collaging it on top. I didn't want it to be perfect. I wanted it to look as if the brush is just covered with a few different areas of tissue paper so you can have those really cool that really cool texture and designs on the background and i went all around the handle both front and back and covered them and even though i was going to add more mediums onto it the designs peeked through the mixed media products which was really nice to see I'm showcasing two brushes here today but in reality I'm only showing the process for one of the brushes as both of them are the same just in different colors. I also use the tissue paper to add a little bit of texture inside the lid and also cover any mistakes I had made with the gesso. Not mistakes so much as like, you know, if it didn't cover that the black fully, this really helped to cover the areas and I did it on the edges of the lid as well. So it would really cover all the little painting mistakes. Now I started working with the composition. I took a Blue Fern Studios chipboard piece, just, I actually don't remember the name of it, but it's just a circular uh, kind of uh, embellishment and put the lid on top of it. And then I took a Prima resin butterfly and some other resin pieces and started up putting them in different places on the brush. These are swirls, flourishes, that are also resin from Prima Marketing. And I started designing how I liked my, my brush to look. 
I knew that I wanted the moth or the butterfly in the center, but the rest was kind of playing around with it and figure out, figuring out where it would, it would look nice. Once I had everything in place, I took some heavy gel from Prima Finabear and started gluing all the embellishments to the background. The only one that I kept loose was the butterfly, just to have it, just to just kind of figure out what I wanted to do with it. I wasn't sure, uh, but all the other elements I glued together. Then I took a little flower, also from Prima, and just glued it uh, in between the swirls to kind of hide the areas where I hadn't filled them in. Then I took some butcher, butcher cord, and this is, this is just string. You could use any string for this. And I wanted to create the strings that go down the dream catcher. My idea was to create a dream catcher out of a brush and to have that center area to be the center of the dream catcher. So as you can see here, I'm using some glue to kind of make sure that the cords hold down and I'm able to have them in the place that I want them. I used about five different strings and I knew that I was going to add the, the feathers later. The only thing I didn't like is that knot on the side so what I ended up doing is I ended up taking it apart as you will see soon and basically just used glue to hold the strings together without having anything attached and any bulky knots anywhere. The next step was to add some art stones because I wanted to have a lot of texture and I took the mini art stones and some soft matte gel and I love this technique as I dip my paintbrush in the gel and then dip it inside the art stones and they stick together really nicely and create this bulky effect with the stones so that way they don't go all over the place when I'm adding them. So here I am adding some stones in some area. This is uh, part this area at the bottom but also adding some inside the circle towards the bottom of the circle I just wanted to kind of add texture not everywhere but in some areas to really make it look as if the stones are falling down the brush so uh, here I am adding at the top and then some on the edges as well and then I go inside once I finished with the other art stones, I took the smaller ones and added a few more with a little spoon in the wet areas where the glue was. Then I took my moth or butterfly and added a lot of gel and glued it to the center of my circle. I let this dry overnight. I actually let it dry more, almost like two days because I was busy and I hadn't had time to get back to it. So it was really dry to start adding the Ken Oliver color bursts. And I knew that's how I wanted to color it. So I took them and I started adding the powder onto the background. You have to make sure that you use something to protect your mat with them or with any, basically any ink because um, you really want to uh, be able to clean them after. I used uh, two colors from the Caribbean collection, lime green and turquoise, and then I sprayed them with water to spread it around. Then I took some of the metallic color bursts, metallic sky and metallic jade, because they were both blue and green and matched perfectly with the brush that I was creating. When you're playing with color bursts, you have to add them in layers to really build up the color. So what I did is I dried in between layers. First I dried the ones that I added in powdered form, and then I put the metallic ones, and again I dried it, and I played around back and forth with the colors to make sure that the color really builds up. The next color I added was the metallic copper, again from the color burst from Ken Oliver, because I really wanted to add that oxidized look to it and create kind of a patina effect. So I added it in certain areas just to add a little bit of uh, that distressed look. And then I took the tangerine color burst from the Caribbean set just to add more rust effect to the background.
I still felt like the rusted effect was not enough so I took some alcohol inks this is the ginger color and I just added adding it a little bit darker tones in certain areas and spread them around to really look, make it look rusty then I went back with the metallic sky and just added it to the butterfly to just color it in and give it a little bit more of that blue color and then a little bit of the jade one as well so I had to play back and forth with the colors which is always the thing that you have to do with different um, inks to be able to get the look that you like so I just continue playing until I like it and that is according to what one person likes you don't you might not you might like it less colorful or less dark and that's up to you to decide so you can basically play around with the colors until you're happy with the result it doesn't have to be exactly like mine I also took the copper color and some of the other metallic colors and started coloring the strings just to add a little bit of color so to take away that whiteness from the actual butcher cord. went ahead and lighten it up using some gold metallic color burst and I basically went around in certain areas kind of in the center of the butterfly and in different embellishments to just add a little bit of highlights of the gold because after I had added the blue and the green it really became very dark and I wanted to just kind of lighten it all up Since the color bursts inks don't have any fixative in them, I use some pixie dust fixative from Prima Finna Bear to just add on top of the ink. That way it will not run when it's displayed. I took some feathers from my stash and using some copper wire, I wrapped them around the butcher cord at the edge of it to basically finish up the dream catcher and have feathers on each one. I took some two different colors of the feathers to just bunch them up together and tie them up at the bottom of the cord. Then I took the alcohol ink and just basically added a few drips of it on the feathers to kind of make them match the rest of the brush and have that rust look on them as well. Mm -hmm. 
Finally, I took some Prima Finabear Art Alchemy Wax in the aged brass and just added a few highlights on certain areas to just make everything shine and broad, bring up that really nice luster to the surface. Finally, I just want to show you another brush that I made at the same time as this one, just in different colors. This I use purples and blues, but I use the exact same techniques with the exact same uh, products and just used different colors feathers and different color inks. Here you can see the texture of the first brush and the colors and how everything came together. I really love how the texture came out and I love this type of dream catcher theme. Then you can see the second one which is purplish and it just really I still added the alcohol ink on it but I used purples and blues in the background and the alcohol ink with the ginger color was just to create that really nice rusted look. Thank you so much for watching. Go on and hop to the next brush video so you can see more inspiration in our YouTube hop. The list of videos is in the description area below. To enter my giveaway, you have to be a subscriber of my channel and leave a comment below. You can win the Prima Marketing prize pack above. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up, and visit my website for more inspiration. Bye!